Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. My name is Mithun and in today's video, we will be talking about OLAP cubes. What exactly do we mean by OLAP cubes? OLAP stands for Online Analytical Processing Cubes. I repeat, OLAP stands for Online Analytical Processing Cubes. This is a reporting tool. SPSS uh, offers OLAP cubes uh, wherein we can summarize the scale variables broken down by different categories. To execute the OLAP cubes in uh, SPSS, what I'll do is I'll be using a case study which is called as telecom case study. Now, what is the background behind this uh, problem? We have a telecommunications firm that wants to reduce churn or the proportion of customers who switch to a different provider. The aim of this analysis is to describe customers who have and have not churned over the last month across the firm's geographical zones or selling areas. So we want to compare churners with non-churners. What exactly do I mean by churn? Many times uh, when we use uh, a telecom service, we are not happy with the service uh, provided uh, by the respective provider. So what we decide to do is we decide to switch the service. We decide to switch from one service to another service. Now, this is what is called as churn. Now, to compare the behavior of churners with respect to non-churners, I will be using a technique called as OLAP cubes. Now, why should I compare? If there are certain distinct characteristics of churners as compared to non-churners, in future, I can identify potential churners from my data set and think of retaining them. That is the entire idea behind churn analysis. Now, let me open up uh, the SPSS file. Now, this is the SPSS screen as you can see, and uh, I will uh, be working on telecommunications file. So in the file menu, I will head to recently used data. SPSS displays 10 recently used files. I will choose the one which is right at the top. Revert to saved. So this is the file that I have. As you can see here, there are uh, six, six plus one, seven variables here. So we have uh, customer's region. <clears throat> Which region does our customer belong to? Is tenure, age, address, income, the number of years that he has spent with the employer, and churn. So the first customer belongs to zone two. He has spent 13 months using the service. His age is 44 years. He has spent nine years in the current uh, location. $64 is his income. He has uh, spent five years with the current employer. Has he churned? Yes. The last variable is important, whether it indicates whether a customer has churned within the last month or not. So the variable churn and region, both of them are categorical variables because region has three different zones here and churn has two different categories. The rest of the variables like tenure, age, address, income, employer, all these are scale variables. How can I summarize this? To summarize this, we'll have to do OLAP cubes or online analytical processing cubes. How do I access the OLAP cubes in SPSS? Let me go to the analyze menu, reports. And the second option here is OLAP cubes. To the left side, you see all the variables that are present in the data set. And to the right side, SPSS is asking me for the summary variables and the grouping variable. Summary variables are all my scale variables. So tenure, age, address, income, employer, all these things will be pushed under the summary list. The categorical variables will be the grouping variable. With this, I like to explore some of the statistics that are present. You can click on the statistics tab here. You can see here, there are a lot of statistics uh, that SPSS offers, starting from mean, median, group mean, standard error, minimum, maximum, so on and so forth. You can choose any of these statistics in the descriptive statistics table. By default, you'll be getting a sum, number of cases, mean, you'll get standard deviation, percent of total sum and percent of total n. I will remove both these variables because I'm not looking at percent. I'll also remove the sum here because I'm not interested in it. I will go with number of cases, mean and standard deviation and hit the continue button. Now I'll jump to the next tab, which is called as title. This allows me some customization with the title. 
what do I want the title to read? I want it to read descriptive statistics. So I'm going to type descriptive statistics here. And when it comes to that, I will type by customer churn, by customer churn and <clears throat> geographical region. So this is what I want as my caption. So this is only for display purposes. This will not affect my analysis. I can click on continue. Once you've made these selections, you're good to go. So hit the, I hit the OK button. Olap cubes uh, now displays what is called as the case processing summary. I will ignore this and make a move on to the descriptive statistics. As you can see here in the rows, I have got all the variables and in the columns, I've got the three statistics, namely the sample size, mean and standard deviation. The sample size in this data set is thousand for each of the variables. The mean, the mean tenure is 35 months, which is, uh, uh, which is around uh, th uh, three years. Yes, it's three years. Age, the average age of the customer here is 42 years. When you look at years at the current address, it is 12 years. Household income is $77. And years with the current employer is 10.9. Now, if you want to look at this descriptive statistics table only for churners, not for the entire data set, let's say I'm interested in look, displaying the descriptive statistics only for the churners. I need to double click. You can see here the drop down menu becomes active. Now, within this drop down, you can just click on either no or yes. If you click on yes, the numbers will change. And these numbers are now reflective of only the churners because I'm clicking on churners within the last month. Now, if you want to study the behavior of non churners, please choose no. And you will get what is the average for months with service, age, year, at current address, so on and so forth, but only for non-churners. Similarly, you can choose any of the zones that you are interested in. This is exactly like a pivot table in Excel. If you are familiar with pivot table in Excel, you would find this very, very relatable because that's what OLAP cubes do. Now, there are a couple of additional things that you can do, which means basically the row, along the rows, I have got the variables and along the column, I have got the statistics. Can I switch position? Can I, can I change the display of this table? Of course I can. How do I do that? I can double click on this particular table, right click. And here, the last but one option reads pivoting trace. So this is very, very important. We can use the pivot trace to change the position of the rows and the columns. Uh, let me just click on pivoting trace. As you can see here in the column, you have statistics currently. And along the row, we have variables. And along the layer tray, what we have is geographical income and churn within the last one. Now, I want to make certain modifications. That is, along the layer tree, I want statistics. So as you can see here, statistics right now is in the column. All that I need to do is drag this and drop it along the layer tree. Yes, you can see here, the display of the table has now changed. I want to make certain other modifications as well. Geographical indicator, which is along the layer tree, let me just drag this and drop it along the column. You can see here, you are able to get the different zones corresponding to the geographical indicator along the column. One more additional thing that I want to do here is, I anyway have variable along the row, but I want to break it down with respect to churn. So let me drag this and drop it along the row. Yes, so you can see here how Pivoting trees give you complete control over the display of the descriptive statistics table. Now, along the layer, I have got statistics. What do I mean by this? You can see the default statistics is N. I can choose mean or standard deviation. This is entirely under my control. I will choose mean here because I'm interested in mean. Okay, mean for some reason is not 
getting highlighted. Let me work on that in a couple of seconds. But floating tray along the layer, I have got statistics and along the rows, I have got variables. Specifically, I'm interested in churn within the last month and along the column, I have geographical indicator. If for some reason you change your mind and you want to uh, bring this along the row, all that you need to do is drag this and drop it along the row. Your, <clears throat> your table itself will be displayed in a different format. Let me close this for time being. Scroll down. As you can see here, it is showing me the number of cases. I will choose mean. This is the mean. As you can see here, this is a lot easier for me to compare because for this particular variable months and months with service or tenure, you can compare what is the average for non-churners. The first row corresponds to what is the average tenure for non-churners. The second row corresponds to what is the average uh, tenure for churners. You can see here for non-churners, the number is 39 point something, 40 point something, 41 point something, and 40. It's around 40. So the average tenure seems to be around 40 months. Look at churners. It is 23, 23 point something, 21 and 22, which means all of these numbers are less than the number at the top, which means it simply means that non-churners have a longer tenure as compared to the churners. Let's look at age. The category no means non-churners. For non-churners, the average age is in excess of 42. Look at the numbers here for each of the three zones, zone one, zone two, zone three, it is 42 point something, 43 point something, and 44 point something. When you look at churners here, that is yes category corresponds to churners, which is 37, less than 42, 36, less than 43, 35, which is less than 44, which means that churners tend to be younger than non-churners. So if you are an old customer, the older you get, the lesser the chance of you churning, younger you are, higher the propensity to churn. That is a broad trend that I can see when I look at the descriptive statistics table. Moving on, years at the current address. You can see here consistently it is 12 plus something, 12 point something, 12 point something here for zone two and 13.3 for zone three. Compare this with the behavior of churners. It is seven point something, eight point something, six point something. The numbers in the second row are less than the ones in the first row indicating that Churners typically stay for a shorter duration in the uh, current address as compared to non-churners because these numbers are all in single digit. Look at non-churners, they're all in double digits. Fantastic, we are able to obtain some level of differentiation between churners and non-churners. Let me proceed to interpret household income in thousand. For uh, the non-churners, it is 77 point something, the average value 77 point something, 85 point something, 86 point something. But when you look at churners, it is 63 point something, 62 point something, 59 point something, which means it is consistently lesser than the first row, which means, uh, how do I interpret this? The household income for non-churners is higher than the household income for churners. And when you look at the years with the current employer, you can see here for non-churners, it is 12 point something. And uh, for all, all these numbers are 12 point something or for all the three zones. And when you look at churners, it is consistently less than their <coughs> non-churners. Uh, uh, their uh, It's consistently less as compared to non-churners. It is uh, six point something, seven point something and six point something again. So what does this mean? This simply means that for non-churners, the, they have a higher tenure, they are older as compared to churners, they stay for longer, they have stayed for longer duration in the current address, their income is higher as compared to churners. And when it comes to spending time with the current employer, they have almost spent twice the number as compared to churners. So this is the benefit of using the OLAP cube. It helps you summarize with respect to all the scale variables broken down by how many other categorical variables you want to enter. I hope this video has benefited you. And uh, with this, I've come to the end of today's presentation. I thank you very much for watching today's presentation. I request you to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. 
Thank you very much. Have a great day.